Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp. I have lots to talk about today. We have a guest from the Missoula Asian Services and the Missoula Public Library working on a collaborative effort for active aging here in Missoula, uh, week-long uh, activities for people who are 50 and over at the Missoula Public Library. They'll talk more about that later in the show. I got some news. I got some air quality stuff. I got a special video from the uh, Missoula uh, County's Boys and Girls Club. I'm just going to show you uh, for Wednesday instead of my dub and stuff that I usually do for Wednesday show. I got a bunch of new programs on MCAT and I got some city council where they talk about uh, how much it's going to cost to light the downtown in the city of Missoula. So let's kick it, let's kick it into gear and let's talk about the weather which is currently standing at 55 degrees. So as you can tell that there is a red flag warning for some of the areas of smoke happening today. Um, it looks like it's going to continue on to through Thursday night. You can see that high of 90 slowly go down to the 80s but of course pretty much stay in those high temperatures but you have lows during the night so there's quite a jump between highs and lows pretty much all week so it's going to kind of continue what happened last week um, I'll have your uh, air quality uh, during your news report which is this so City Lake has uh, has an evacuation order while Lola Florence areas have lifted certain areas to allow people back into their homes um, dry thunderstorms were forecast for parts of the Missoula area Tuesday afternoon which could lead to uh, new fires starts and create winds that sp uh, spread existing burns in regions that saw new uh, mandatory evacuations around Sealy Lake on Monday night and in Ravalli County on Tuesday morning and this is from the Missoulian. Part of the smoke was uh, from the Rice Ridge fire outside of Sealy Lake, which saw two rounds of mandatory evacuations Monday night after an abrupt change in afternoon and wind direction shifted in blaze uh, south towards Sealy uh, Creek, uh, allowed, according to crew reports, the fire came within more than half a mile of the nearest structures li uh, late Monday night. The burn areas grew about 3,000 more acres, bringing the, to bringing the total to 30,700 acres. The mandatory evacuation affected about 1,200 homes. Gusty winds and low humidity are expected to continue Tuesday, which could fuel additional expansion. Sealy Swan classes are canceled, just as school this week has started for MCPS. Crews fighting the Lolo Creek fire, uh, on the other hand, were diverted from normal operations Monday by new fire activity west of the line in the Copper Creek drainage. It has also breached uh, retardant lines across uh, on One Horse Creek and an area crews had worked to reinforce over the last week. They expect it will continue to burn down the drainage and remain the most active along its southern edge. Crews will work to prevent it from spreading east towards Kootenai Creek fire scar from 2009. The fire has burned nearly 39,000 acres since starting July 15th. Um, the current air quality, as you can see, uh, here is a nice little uh, representation of the map. And you can see uh, the big thick area of BAD is uh, basically in Sealy Lake, but doesn't mean that um, Missoula isn't getting infected from the Lolo Creek fire, which is giving us the unhealthy um, for everybody. And then of course, uh, the, o the orange is unhealthy for sensitive groups. If you look at the Missoula air quality, you can see that it's probably going to get a little bit worse before it gets a little bit better. Um, usually today, uh, usually most days from what I've seen in most statistics, uh, I've basically been reporting on, it has basically grown. It'll probably, probably be around this area by the by noon ish and then maybe start going down but of course last night it got up into uh, 74 particulate matter and currently it stands at 72 so um, yeah it's unhealthy outside if you haven't already noticed um, that's kind of what's happening but let's switch gears and let's talk about other things that are happening to um, uh, the state of Montana that don't involve uh, everything being on fire. Um, Montana's attempt to influence a key decision on coal strips future has been ruled irrelevant and too late to matter by the administrative judge. According to reports from the Billions Get Gazette, Judge Dennis Moss has shelved Montana Attorney General Tim, Fo Tim Fox attempt to influence a Washington U utilities plan for shutting down coal strip units one and two, saying that most of the points submitted by on Fox's behalf are irrelevant, Moss called the Republican Attorney General's expert witness unqualified. The power plant's oldest two units are slated for shutdown within six years. The economic loss associated with shutting the two units is expected to, to surpass $500 million within three years of the unit's closure. Not to mention the cost of cleanups will cost Cold Strip quite some money as well. The record will show that uh, Montana submitted something, but never, uh, but neither the submission nor the ex uh, ex exhibits the Attorney General submitted to back it up will put it 
to use in deciding Puget Sound's energy general rate case, um, Moss ruled, um, in, other, in other words, the official record will show Montana offered no evidence. Um, in national news, uh, while we're on fire, uh, Houston and the other southern parts of Texas are uh, are dealing with catastrophic flooding that has ed- already swallowed thousands of homes in Texas. Could it get worse after a, after the levee breach south of Houston? Um, from what, what reports say, uh, reports of o- over 48 inches of rain from the storm known as Harvey that marks the most rain ever recorded in the um, history of the United States from tropical storms that made landfall. The previous record was held by tropical storm Amelia, which hit Texas in 1978. And I got this from CNN.com. Um, also, at least 18 people have already died in the Texas flooding. One of them, a uh, Houston uh, police sergeant, Steve Perez, drowned while trying to get to work. About one-third of Houston area is covered in wa- water, and it's unclear exactly how many people still need to be rescued. Um, so far, uh, 3,500 people have been rescued um, in Houston, and but overall, there's 13,000 people that have been rescued from the flood. So that basically concludes everything that's happening in the world today. Um, if you haven't already heard that um, the North Korea did launch missiles over Japan, there's a lot of uh, countries that are uh, basically uh, asking North Korea to meet with them so they can actually have discussing, um, but also to help uh, perv- derail any kind of future plans for any uh, nuclear development from North Korea as well. So that's kind of what's happening in the world today. I got some art clips, and then I'm going to bring out some guests to talk about Active Aging Week starting September 24th. Alicia. Alicia, you're with Missoula Agent Services, and you are with the Missoula Public Library, and Missoula Agent Services collaborating with the Missoula Public Library for an event that's coming up in um, late September. That's Can you guys talk about that's it? That's right. That's right. We're here to talk about and promote Active Aging Week, which is happening across the country. And in Missoula, we have a lot of fun events happening at the Missoula Public Library um, from September 24th until the 30th. All the events are free and we're excited to tell you more about them. Cool, Let's. Uh, I'm showing up the website right now. You can find out more information by going to missoulapubliclibrary.org. Mm-hmm. And this actually gives a nice little overview of what people can expect from the public library. Yeah, yeah. Um, we've got all sorts of things going on. Um, and we've thought a lot about um, these events and pertains to what the library does and what Missoula Aging Services does and how that can support active aging in our community. And Missoula Aging Services promotes the independence, dignity, and health of older adults and those that care for them. Yeah, and the library, um, is uh, they provide programs, materials, and services to the community to meet informational, cultural, recreational, and educational needs. Cool, and I uh, hear that you, uh, the Bookmobile, also mm-hmm. uh, yeah. delivers books to folks as well. Yes, yeah. Um, It's out four days a week in our community, um, going to places that uh, don't normally have internet access or it's hard to get to the main branch of the public library. 
And you have a couple events that uh, really kind of stuck out to me. There's a, apparently there's a hip hop group <laughs> that uh, for uh, people who are 50 and over that come together. Some people who are in um, wheelchairs and crutches and all that stuff. Um, basically um, rapping and, com- and competing <laughs> with other rappers. So I think you're Vegas. talking about a film that's yeah. going to be shown at the matinee. Yep. We're showing a film called Hip Hop Oration, mm-hmm. and that's going to be on? That is Wednesday, September 27th, and it's during our regularly scheduled afternoon matinee at 2 p.m. It's just this time going to be in the theme of Active Aging Week. And um, Hip Hop Oration is a film that follows a troop of courageous yet cheeky older adults on an extraordinary quest to perform at the World Hip Hop Championship in Las Vegas. Cool. So, and um, you're, and this is also a way for the Missoula Asian Services to connect to uh, people who are 50 and over. And That's right. uh, there's also an event happening that you guys usually do a class. Yeah, uh, we have we have a class called Life Re- Reimagined through AARP Montana. And it's an opportunity on Tuesday evening. People can register for the class. We're going to register 20 people to explore what they're passionate about in life and come up with a plan to make those things happen. There's going to be food and door prizes. It's going to be tons of fun. (laughs) I should also mention after the film, the matinee film, we Mm -hmm. also have an a local ULA instructor named Kelly coming to promote a class that's kicking off at the Senior Center the week that follows. It's going to be an Mm. intro to to ULA class. Cool. And we also have a writing workshop kicking Mm -hmm. off on Sunday. Do you want to talk about that, Amanda? Yes. So Caroline Patterson of the Missoula Writing Collaborative is going to be doing a poetry workshop. And um, the whole focus of the poetry workshop is going to be exploring who you are at your present time. A lot of times, I think when we're doing writing workshops, you're asked to think about things that had happened in the past and reflect on them. So we had uh, the idea of exploring pre- what you're doing presently and how you will, will move on from that. Cool. Yeah. That, it looks like there's a lot of events here. Are there any events that you uh, really also want to highlight as well? Because you're also looking yeah. for volunteers. We are, Scott. Thanks for mentioning that. So on Friday at the library, our Missoula Senior Corps team will be um, tabling the event. Senior Corps promotes um, about 70 nonprofits and opportunities to volunteer for people 55 plus. We also will have information for people under 55 that are interested in volunteering across Missoula. And I encourage people to stop by and learn more about it. Mm -hmm. So where can people find more information about um, the Museo Asian Services and the Public Library? Sure. Well, if you go to www.missoulapubliclibrary.org and um, click on the Active Aging Week link, you can get detailed explanations of each event that's going on with the times and where they're located. And um, you can also call the library at 721-BOOK. And I should also mention, we didn't talk about mountain lions coming Mm -hmm. to do a transportation (laughs) piece, and that's on Monday. Yes, yeah. Monday afternoon. So if you're interested in learning more about transportation in Missoula, Mm -hmm. come come to that. Yeah. Excellent. So uh, once again, if you want to learn more information about Missoula Asian Services, you can log on to their website. I'll just bring it up real quick. MissoulaAsianServices.org. You can look up Active um, Aging. Active Aging Week, yep. yep. And you can um, get the link to the Missoula Public Library at there as well if you're more uh, familiar with the Missoula Asian website. But also, if you want to find more information, it's easy just to call um, the people at the Missoula Public Library at 721 Book, otherwise known as 721 2665. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, is there anything else you guys want to say? I think so. No, I just hope people come join us. It's going to be a lot of fun. Tons of fun. Yeah. All right, uh, we'll be right back after a couple of clips from here, and we still got more show for you guys, so stay with us. Um, just, I don't know off the top of my head, but are those existing mature trees, or are those? Right now, these, these plans show the existing trees, but we've already heard from the, the city arborist or the forester that 90% of the trees on that site or block are mm-hmm. at the end of their existence, but we've talked pretty closely yesterday with a landscape architect about what that north side is going to look like we still see total value in providing uh you know trees whether it's a tighter repetition or smaller ornamental trees and then how are they going to perform up against a building that's 65 feet tall so i think looking at 
creative ways to buffer between the street edge, creating a, a feeling of safety. Because so there may be things in here that's like, ooh, we never thought of that, right? So let's, let's see if we want to incorporate that in. And there may be things that you do, right? The way you operate that makes you function and flow and, and operate really effectively and efficiently, that is consistent with the law, right? All those qualifiers. It's consistent with the law, you're effective, efficient. I would write it down and say this process is going to be canonized in our rules and uh, rules of procedure because you're just one election or one appointment away from disaster, right? You get some of the cycles off and now you've got a new person that comes on the board and the dynamics have changed. And what may have worked really well before is now blown up. And guys here real soon. The solution. What, what are we going to do? And my only thought is to have a cake, pour some wine, get some, serve some food, make food together, create dishes together, hang out, get music going, and more, most importantly, get our children playing together. Um, because that's what I saw at Standing Rock. I saw kids playing, even with this hellish crap that was going on in the hills, the cops, and all of the sort of looming and pending danger. There were children at play. And not only that, they were using their language. Words were going out. Whoops were off in the distance. Our culture was all around. Hey guys, welcome back. And those are some of the new programs that are going to be airing on AIMCAT this week. There's always some new programs on there that I've missed, so you can always find out them and more by logging on to MCAT.org. So here is where is a great resource for you guys to find everything that's Missoula, all the programs that MCAT has filmed for the community, for nonprofits that here are in town. If you are a nonprofit or civic group that is interested in being a part of MCAT and taking um, – uh, be basically being able to learn how to film and edit your own things or if you have an upcoming event that you want MCAT to film you can go to our how do I link and request event recording or you if you already have a program already done you can always submit a program to us we are more than willing to import programs that you guys have made just as long as it has a non-commercial element to it so uh, if you want to find more information about my wake up Missoula show you can go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. We are the last best morning show. And I don't know if I'm going to like make a huge synopsis of every single show, but if there's anything special, I'll, I'll throw it up there as well. I think I'm going to make that little change just so I can help streamline the upload process as well. So here is uh, a great website, which I always use. It's called ci.missoula.mt.us. It's the government website for the city of Missoula, and it's what I use to talk about 
City Council. And today, um, City Council, they're going to be talking about all sorts of um, things that are happening. And uh, we're going to kick things off with um, uh, Marty Rabine, who is the Missoula City Clerk. As you know, the park and road districts in Missoula cover the entire city limits and all parcels that have been annexed to the city since the districts were first created. Um, the City Council conducted a public hearing on the work plan and the budget for both of the districts and approved them on July 24th. The final budget for the Park District was set at $1,591,562 and the final budget for the Road District was set at $2,115,064. Um, the State of Montana Department of Revenue has transmitted uh, their taxable values and this morning uh, the gal who calculates these assessments on a per parcel basis finished up the work. So uh, uh, attached to your agenda this evening are the assessments for each of the individual properties in both of these districts and city staff are recommending adoption of the resolution and uh, uh, levying assessments. Um, the total amounts that I read are divided up um, and assessed to each parcel that's based on the portion of the taxable value that that parcel's taxable value bears to the whole valuation of the city, if that makes sense. And um, the same, this is the same method that's been used ever since district was established. I'm here to answer. All right, so uh, that was Marty Rabine. And uh, some people aren't too keen on having um, certain tax areas. And um, and so this is uh, Janet Van Fossen, who is uh, part of some of these districts, who is not happy about certain taxes in the areas. I wanted to point out that since 2010, when this district was created, it has grown by 750%. When I first started paying taxes in this district, I paid $6. Last year, I paid $45. So it's an exploding special district. That's my, the first part of what I wanted to tell you with my three minutes. The second part of what I wanted to tell you is that this $1.4 million that you're about to levy on taxpayers of Missoula, $200,000 of that is going for debt service. And I would really appreciate if you could clarify which bonds special assessment funds are being used to pay for. All right, so uh, um, here are some of the other quotes that in response to some of these comments as well. But uh, I have another quote of uh, a person uh, who is also, who talks about the comparisons between special districts and levies and how they appear on tax bills. Here's Jesse Ramos after Ms. Van Fossen's presentation, but I was also curious why the mill levies don't uh, appear in the, in the resolution for the park districts. And I just wanted to know if you guys minded explaining to the citizens, just for the sake of accountability, why the calculations on their individual tax bills never map out, math out when they're paired with the mill levies provided for the special districts. I think that that's something that I've heard the most uh, on the campaign trail is what is the special district and why does it not match my tax bill and why do the mill levies promised not reflect on the tax bill when they're actually charged for the bill. So thank you all. All right. So here is um, a response by uh, the city um, administrative chief uh, Chief Administration Officer for the City of Missoula responds to uh, a lot of people's questions about um, basically um, what am I paying and who's paying and this uh, kind of stuff. This for assessing the park district and the road district is on taxable value is on and and so you 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 calculate it as if you were applying mills. However, because it's a special district. Um, it's not a, it's not technically a property tax. It's an assessment, and so by statute, it's really these are special assessments, and the, and so the mill levy doesn't doesn't um, technically apply. So that's why that language isn't um, shown in the um, in in the resolutions. All right. So basically, what he's saying is that. Um Many areas uh, have debt services that cover their own areas, and when it comes to levy, bonds, and special districts, the way money moves is, is basically through funneling, which is basically a way to navigate funds to the right places so no one will be affected by the other. And a lot of ways is that special districts are usually made so they can do uh, 
mostly short-term um, fixes in certain areas without uh, basically having um, your neighbors pay for, b b the ba basically having the neighboring districts paying for the district. So it's a way for the district to pay for their own uh, selves as well. So many of the, uh, the amount of $1,591,562 for the cost associated with providing certain maintenances, purchasing and improvement services in the fiscal year 2018 for city owned facilities, land and equipment under the responsibility and care of the city of Missoula Parks and Recreation Department, providing for a method of assessment and providing for other matters uh, prob probably relating there too. So that's basically uh, kind of what they're talking about that and um, the city did vote in favor of this. Um, up next we got this um, the lighting of city of the city of Missoula is going to go up. Um, the the uh, Northwestern Energy has uh, increased the uh, uh, um, the basically the costs of lighting the um, city of Missoula uh, by by more than fifty thousand dollars and it's a ten percent increase of uh, it basically, um, it's a uh, 16% increase from la basically is that, and this is something that they're preparing for next year. So currently, the uh, bills of uh, last year's assessment bill totaled thir $313,000, um, and then this year is supposed to get up to uh, 368. Three hundred sixty-four thousand. Sorry. Um, here's Marty Rabine, um, kind of like talking about this a little bit. Uh, we are aware of a rate increase that was passed by the Public Service Commission, and so uh, pass through of that rate increase, it's a 5.8% increase uh, from Northwestern Energy for the city's lighting district. So we um, last year um, did not, uh, our estimate didn't include it enough, and so Last year's uh, assessments in this in these districts was uh, three hundred thirteen thousand one hundred sixteen dollars and seventy seven cents. This year there's three sixty four forty seven fourteen, so three hundred sixty four thousand forty seven dollars and fourteen. Um, I'm here if you have any questions. All right, so um, while many of the uh, city council members were not really happy about this certain increase, Marty um, Emily Bentley uh, asked about the five percent increase um, from Dale Bickle. Does that um, increase impact the general fund in the sense that we have, you know, 5% more higher uh, electricity bills to pay and so that we're also passing on that cost or absorbing it um, in our budget, Dale? So in the baseline budget for the for city operations yet yeah, we that is included in our in our in our budget the, the our estimates of increased utility costs um, related to the lighting districts um, you know 90 percent of those costs are passed on to the um, to the the, the 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 taxpayers that are in the lighting districts while the, the general fund has to pick up that um, of that 10 percent portion the, the general fund has to pick up that portion as well all right so that was Dale Bickle uh, this um, the city of Missoula uh, general fund 10 percent of the money goes to paying uh, electricity bills and utilities and whatnot um, here is let's see John Debari who is not um, happy at all about this increase in um, paying for power I think this is a ripoff so um, I don't see the value uh, in this. I pay more for my lighting district than I pay for my parks district and just a little bit under the roads district. And, and I don't think we get nearly the value that, uh, that we get for the parks district and the roads district. Um, I don't know how many times over we've paid for the lighting infrastructure. It's terrible lighting and um, I I just really don't think I can support this. As I've mentioned before, I plan to move forward a referral to understand better how we can try to address this issue of lighting in the city, and uh, and I'm not really willing to continue the status quo at this point. All right, so um, the next quote we have is from um, John Wilkins, who is oh, who agrees with John DeBarry. I remember when I moved here in the early 70s, I almost took the chainsaw out and cut my light pole down when I saw the bill. <laughs> uh, I still had the chainsaw. <laughs> All right, so that was uh, John Wilkins in response uh, to this as well. So um, Mayor John Ingen um, responds to all this as well, and this is what he had to say. 
those comments, um, as I've mentioned uh, occasionally, uh, Chase Jones is working um, to understand our street lighting uh, system. Uh, and I actually have some high hopes that there might be some things we can do. In the meantime, we're working incrementally, um, starting with the Missoula Parking Commission on a performance contract that would not only upgrade that lighting but uh, save energy over time. And I hope that we can consider a broader program in the relatively near future. All right. So basically the city is going to move forward on paying these bills because there were opposition and um, motion did pass with people with uh, the nays. The people who voted against this were John Barry, John Wilkins, and Julie Armstrong who didn't vote in favor of this. But a lot of times um, uh, the ward uh, city council members did vote in favor of it. I mean, think about it as paying like your power bill. If you don't pay your power, power bill, they don't give you power. So think of it like that. Um, so the city had, I mean, in a lot of ways, no choice to vote in favor of this, uh, uh, basically paying uh, $50,000 more for lighting the downtown Missoula area. And, you know, I mean, people who live in Missoula, you know, if you... Uh, if you have any suggestions, if you have any um, things, uh, you, there's uh, many different ways you can get involved with the city of Missoula. Just by logging on to ci.missoula.mt.us. Um, I'm gonna. I think I'm just gonna stop it there. This is a great. Res this is a website is a great resource to find up any upcoming uh, events. Uh, not events, but uh, yeah, they do have events on here, mostly through the Parks and Rec Department. But they also have a lot of community meetings, and they talk about a lot of agenda items. And you guys can. Um, there's plenty of room for public comment, and also. Co comment towards uh, certain items on there as well that they're going to be talking about. And I believe today, um, during the uh, land use and planning, they're going to be talking about the uh, Missoula uh, Cemetery when they're trying to do memorial sales. So that's going to be a continuation of something they've been talking about for quite some time. And I'll have that for your Friday's um, city council report, hopefully. So um, without further ado, I have a brand new summer series uh, kids uh inspired video and this is called get bob f six well also it's also get bob the final chapter bob gets you there's like 500 titles but pretty much this is the sixth movie of the get bob uh expanded universe so when i come back i'll talk about events that are happening in missoula and then i'll start wrapping up the show <laughs> And he you, you were trying, trying to get Bob? Bob, he's changed. He's aggressive. He's violent. <laughs> Bob, is that you? Bob? Got any potato chips? <laughs> Who am 
I. Who are you? Okay. My name's Kyle. I'm Jeff. I'm Emily. I traded my name for the daddy chip. Uh-huh. Okay. Then what's the deal with this guy? He's been going through some stuff. I have crippling depression. Everybody died. Anyways, moving on. Let's talk about uh, some new events that are happening in and around the Missoula area. So, um, kids bounce and play. What do you got to say? That's happened at the indoor s um, Missoula Indoor Sports Arena. And they just play around. It happens at 10 a.m. And it's at uh, the Zoo Town um, in Flata Park. Um, it's at the Bounce and Playhouse from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Monday through Saturday, plus 4 to 7 p.m. on Monday through Wednesday. And seven, oh God, this is like really confusing. Uh, for more information and to be less confusing, you'd be like, uh, you can call them at 531 uh, 3331-3331. Or you can email them info at missoulaindoor.com. Um, and uh, why not? You know, I gotta keep the kids out of that smoke. Um, maybe go inside. I don't know. That's just think about it. Uh, but if you want to go outside, the Jameson and the Sword Sword Sorted Seed is at out to lunch, starting at 11 a.m. They're gonna be uh, uh, children's activities provided by Girl Scouts of Montana and Wyoming. Um, out to lunch is a weekly concert series at the uh, Karis Park and the City. Clark Fork, uh, Clark Fork River featuring musicians and over 20 varied food vendors and this goes from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. and I think this might be the last one because it goes um, says June July and August so this is the last official one in August they might I don't know if they have one in September but if they don't it's the last one is today from 11 to 2 kinetic sand is happening at family's first children's museum at 11 to 11:30 a.m. You can come play it with the unique sand that just doesn't dry out. Uh, I can't find any kinetic sand for, to, for the life of me at any store, so I guess this would be the best place to do it. Um, intro to Twitter. Hey, 
<laughs> you know how to use Twitter? Um, most people don't. So if you want to learn how to use Twitter, go to the Missoula Public Library starting at 12.30 a.m. Don't know, do, don't know the difference between a hashtag and an at sign? Register for this intro to Twitter class and learn the basics from how to set up an account to navigating some common functions. Registration is required by calling 721-BOOK, uh, 721-2665, and this is from 12.30 to 1.30 p.m. Hey, you know how to use Twitter? Well, now you do at the Missoula Public Library. Um, early artists program, treats, and yummy foods, and art. Um, Zootown Arts Community Center is doing a, uh, using Yummy treats and food as inspiration to early artists will be able to tell stories through listening, play, and um, tactile art making. Mixed media exploration guided by professional youth programs, uh, Carlene uh, Katner, Kantner is designed to assist your early artist in a cognitive preparation needed for reading, writing, and learning. Um, ballet Arts Academy, if you have a kid that likes ballet or is interested in ballet, they have... Um, registration open house at the Ballet Arts Academy so you can meet and greet some of the uh, ballet instructors also some kids who also do some ballet and some stuff but if you're not interested in that you learn some ballet jazz modern tap pre-ballet and point I have no idea what point is uh, we teach the appropriate skills to lead your child through a successful tech uh, technique based training by the highly trained fac faculty they are co um, community oriented and closely aligned with the Garden City Ballet's the Nutcracker so if you have any talent uh, or if, if you wish to gain some talent, that's the place to do it. Um, there's the uh, stand-up open mic at the Ballander, uh, Missoula's newest stand-up open mic. It is free, and to try your uh, hand at some stand-up comedy, it's happening uh, tonight at 7.30 at the Ballander. Um, John Howard hosts this Missoula uh, comedic godfather. He's the guy who's headlining. Um, Charlie uh, McCorn, the best host in town, is hosting. And the comics between the ages of 18 and 21 are welcome but have to leave after the show ends at 9 p.m. And if you are a lady or non-binary person, come by at 6 p.m. for the Women's Comedy Happy Hour and Workshop. No experience needed, only an enthusiasm, interest in doing comedy at some point. Um, they have drink specials, all sorts of wonderful things. But here are some of your music events that are happening for your Wednesday night. Um, if you're interested in karaoke, um, karaoke is at the Eagles Lodge, uh, Badlander, and the Sunrise Saloon, all starting late night tonight so i have a new art clip for you guys it is from another uh i think it's the one from the missouri art museum and it's tapestry so you guys get a chance to check that out and it's going on through september Hey, it's Thursday. Wait, wait, just kidding. Uh, here are some Thursday events that are happening Thursday. Red, Claw Red Cross is kicking things off for um, you guys on um, Thursday morning at 10 a.m. Uh, donate some blood. Donate some um, plasma through the American Red Cross as uh, Liquid Planet hosts uh, the Blood Bus 
in front of Liquid Planet. So you can uh, donate some blood to help some people. Um, Tiny Tales at the Missoula Public Library is at 10.30 a.m. Um, this is from birth to three years of age. And uh, kids basically um, get experience learning to read. It's held every Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday at 10.30 a.m. Babies age to birth, blah, blah, blah. I already told you the age. You can learn finger plays, nursery rhymes, and hear stories. This program is usually held downstairs in the large meeting room, and of course, signs will be posted if it's hosted elsewhere. Um, your your kids' vocabulary um, toddlers learn new nine word nine new words a day, according to this synopsis of the thing, of uh, the thing, the th the thingy, the what, the th you know, like it's uh, it's Tiny Tales. You know, they, then they have kids' story times for a little bit older kids, but yeah, Tiny Tales is a good way to introduce your kids to books. Um, 10.30 a.m. So, Young Artist After School Program, 3D Sculptures. So, 3D Sculptures, hey, <laughs> Z-Town Arts Community Center, uh, you're doing a lot of stuff now. Uh, students will dive into creative school year with hands-on experience in 3D fun. This class will be uh, eclectic in style as young artists learn to build using a variety of methods um, or mediums. Sorry, I'm just like, I'm trying to talk to you while also reading this. So as they study works of both historical and contemporary artists and architectures, they learn how to helpful techniques to build our heart's desires. Um, eye spots, Missoula Insectarium, did you know that these big spots on the wings of many butterflies and moths are meant to look like eyes of owls or other predatory animals? Join them as they learn these colorful scare tactics as they make there are own eyes on masks. So basically, you're gonna make some masks um, inspira inspired by moths and butterflies. Ropes course at Open Climb, 5 p.m. McCormick Park. This is a great way to learn how to climb and learn the basics to ascend a rope or belay or just have fun climbing to new heights. 5 to 8 p.m. every Thursday throughout the summer. $5 suggested donation, and this is at McCormick Park. The Ghost Peppers at Downtown Tonight. Um, they are a band, not the actual Ghost Peppers. Um, and. Uh, and Children Activities is presented by Traveler's Rest, which I heard is getting more and more popular um, as time goes on. There's a lot of events. They always have a lot of ed educational through Traveler's, R Traveler's Rest. Downtown uh, Tonight happens every Thursday night um, from 5.30 8.30 p.m. This is probably the last Downtown Tonight, and this is a uh, weekly family activities, and there also is free to attend. Um, the only thing you have to pay for is the uh, drinks, appetizers, and foods that they provide there through the vendors. Um, begin animal communication conference call um, what if what if you could connect with animals and hear what they have to say you can join this illuminating educational and fun conference call and learn how fulfilling um, it is to connect with the animals they'll be sharing with you you have learned um, over the 20 years uh, of experience um, and then uh, with animals um, the call takes place in real time, live with themselves and the participants. It is highly interactive experience, a dynamic relationship between lecture, Q&A, participants, chat, and making connection with like-minded folk throughout the call. The the one, uh, those on the call will find out how they can submit an animal communication question and receive a complimentary answer. Once you are registered, you can receive a call-in info, and you can re register to um, the bit, the, uh, sorry, it's the, uh, bit.ly slash animal communi communication call to register. Um, and here are some of your late night events that are happening for your Thursday night. Uh, Caracol at DraftWorks uh, Music Company. It's miscellaneous music, so kind of like a nice little overall uh, encompassing music. Uh, Cody Jinx with uh, Ward Davis at the Wilma. It's going to be country music. Uh, country dance lessons with uh, instructor Kathy Clark, which is usually a weekly thing that happens at the Sunrise Saloon at 7 p.m. Uh, live jazz is happening at the Plonk. Um, combat entertainment is happening at the Sunrise Saloon. It's country music. Um, rocking karaoke at Dark Horse. Uh, karaoke at BFW. So those are some of your Thursday night events as well there's a lot of stuff happening and yeah i mean um this friday is first friday so i'll have plenty of events to talk about for your first friday on september 1st which is this friday so this is my last show in august so um if you want to find out more information about my show you can log on to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula so nice you we made you write it out twice you can also find me on mcat.org along with many other programs that are locally produced here in Missoula. If you're interested in being a part of MCAT, every month uh, um, 
Um, MCAT offers a tour and training beginning at 5.30 p.m. It's every second Wednesday of the month, and you can click on the image to read the Volunteer Producer Handbook and come see us. So it is a great way for people to connect with MCAT and learn everything that you need to know about MCAT and get involved with MCAT. MCAT provides um, camera rentals. Um, we also provide education to people who are interested in making their own videos as well, and as well as connecting you with other people who make videos along the way. So if you're interested in being a part of a video making process, MCAT's the place to do it. It, it is a community place for people who like to make movies and like to make videos. So MCAT is a great resource. You can email us MCAT at MCAT.org for more information and to have direct response. Be sure to like MCAT at um, Missoula's uh, Community Media Resource. We're on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter at MCAT TV Missoula. There's all sorts of wonderful resources and wonderful ways to get involved with MCAT. MCAT is a um, public access station here in town that offers many different ways and tools and equipment that you guys can use to make your own YouTube videos, whatever. Great. So uh, thank you guys for joining me. Um, there's a lot happening, and this Friday I'll be showing the pr pretty much the last video from the Boys and Girls Club, uh, which features uh, – actually, no, there's a couple more. Maybe I'm lying. Maybe I'm not. I don't know. Maybe I'm just not going to show anymore after th this Friday. So for this Friday, I'm excited because the kids made a feature uh, – feature it – we have a feature film from the Boys and Girls Club that are going to be airing this Friday, so you don't want to miss it. Um, so thanks for joining me. Um, I want to thank uh, um, the, my guests from the Missoula Asian Service. Um, let's see, Alicia Crandall and Amanda uh, Allpress from the Missoula Public Library and the Missoula Agent Services talking about their uh, Active Aging Week, which starts on September 24th and runs all week long. And I'm, I'm personally excited for the documentary about hip hop grandpas and grandmas. So it'd be really cool. And I'm, not, I'm totally butchering the name, but it, there's a lot of cool things happening in the month of September besides just school starting. So get to class. It's time for school. Um, thanks for joining me. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramph. Thank you.